We've seen some operators already, such as with Python we can do 3 plus 2, get 5. We can even substitute in variables using the assignment operator we talked about before. Such as if I set x equal to 4, I can then do 3 plus x and get 7. I can't do 3 plus y because I haven't told the computer what y is yet, but if before I do that, I do y equals 10, hit the up arrow a few times, and then do 3 plus y. I can get 13 back and it works just fine. Now, there are other operators we can do. 5 minus 2 for subtraction. That seems pretty straightforward. Another one that could seem straightforward at first, but there's a few little oddities, is multiplication. You can use the asterisks for multiplication. So 5 times 3 gives you 15. But it seems a bit odd. Juxtaposition doesn't work. So I cannot do the following. 5x doesn't work, but 5 times x, where you explicitly say that you want to multiply it, does work. Same thing with parentheses. 5 times 3 minus 2. This looks like it should be 5 times 3 minus 2, but the computer is confused. It doesn't know to multiply it. You actually need to explicitly put the asterisk in there. And then it'll do the multiplication like you expect. That's something to keep in mind when doing multiplication, aside just from the fact that it's an asterisk. Now, if you want to divide, 6 slash 3 will be 6 divided by 3, giving you 2.0. 7 slash 2 will give you 3.5, like we would expect. There's another operator for division, and sometimes, for instance, when we're working with coordinates on the screen and you're doing graphics, you don't want to try to draw something at three and a half dots because the computer can't draw something at three and a half dots. It can draw it at dot three or dot four, but not in the middle. So in that case, one of the easiest things to do is what's called a floor division. This would be two slashes in a row. It will always give you an integer result, such as 10 slash slash three, will give you a 3. 11 slash slash 3 will still give you a 3. 12 slash slash 3 will give you a 4. A floor division will always give you an integer result, but it will not round it. It will always go down. For example, 199 slash slash 200 won't give you 2 it'll actually give you zero because it'll always round down. Likewise, 199 slash slash 100 will give you a one, but 200 slash slash 100 will finally get up to two. Another one is the power operator, and this one's easy to confuse, such as if you're gonna do two to the 16th power, people might wanna do a caret. This is a really common symbol for doing power but it's not the symbol that Python uses. This won't work. You get something else entirely. So that is a little bit dangerous because you think you're going to get to the power of, but you get something else. Two asterisk asterisk 16 will give you two to the 16th power. Two to the eighth power, whoops. Two to the eighth power there, or you could go 10 to the fourth power 10 to the fourth power with two asterisks. That was 10 times four, of course. And there you go. Now, an unusual operator that is very useful inside of computer science is the modulus operator. In the case of six divided by two, we know the answer is three. What a modulus operator does, six percent to has nothing actually to do with percent, but it's a modulus operator, so 6 modulus 2 will take 6 divided by 2 and give us the remainder. If you remember when you used to do long division before you learned decimals, there was a remainder. Now, in this case, there is no remainder, and we get a 0 back. If I do 7 percent 2, there should be a remainder. I'll get a 1 back. 8 percent 2 goes in evenly. I get 0. 9 percent 2 gives me a one. This modulus operator is really useful to use when you're in a loop and you want something to happen every so many times. Such as if I want something to happen every five times, I can simply say um, one modulus five and I get a one, then I keep going up. 
and you'll see the pattern here. Four, when I get up to five, it resets back to zero, and I start over again. So I can keep a counter, and if I want to do something every five times, I can check whenever this counter, modulus five, is equal to zero, I can do that one thing. So if you want to color every other line, you can do a modulus by two, for example. At any rate, it's a very useful operation, and it's something that you might not use a lot in math right now, but is rather important. Another thing to keep in mind when working with operators and mathematical expressions is the order of operations such as if I wanted to create an average of something I might be tempted to write out an equation like this but this is not going to give me the average I may have taken five numbers added them together and divided by five but what I'm actually going to get is the computer is going to do this first. Division happens first. So I've got 98 over 5 and it's going to add the 90 and 86 and so forth after that. That's not what I want if I want to calculate the average. So in order to actually get this to work correctly I need to put parentheses around what I want to happen first. So keep in mind, order of operations, very important when working with expressions on the computer, and you're probably already used to something like that. Now, you can also do trig functions, but it may not be very straightforward. For example, if I want to do sine of pi, 3.14, the computer's going to complain, doesn't know what sine is. So before I actually do any math operators, there's something important I need to do, and that is to import all those math functions. And you do that with the following command from math import star. And then you can do sine of pi, sine of pi divided by 2, for example, and so forth. So all these math operations are available, but before you do that, you need to do this import. Once you do the import, you're good after that. Now, we won't do sine cosine operations in this book until much later, but I want to point out that those are available uh, for you to be able to use.